Tuesday is here, and with it, the return of dryline thunderstorms. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Fort Stockton becomes the annual target once again today, and for the next few days, it's time to begin the Fort Stocktoning. Let's talk about when storms are going to fire up today in this, well, I already told you, Tuesday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. <laughs> Good morning, it's Tuesday, the 22nd of April, 2025. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Rammer, fully caffeinated, on schedule, and ready to go with your weather briefing. Let's get into it, and ooh, little fancy buttons. See, I can be ADD, too. Anyway, yes, ladies and gentlemen, after a day without many severe storms, well, we had a few down on the coastal bend, southeast Texas, yesterday morning, so I can't say it was a fully quiet day. Oh, I said the keyword, but... That is not going to be the case going into this afternoon and evening. And for the next several afternoon and evenings, because things shift back west, the dry line becomes active, and we do what we typically do here in late April into early May, and that is afternoon supercells. Let's first start off with the wildfire outlook from the Texas A&M Forest Service going over the next few days. You can see fire danger is going to be confined to far western portions of Texas, the Borderland, the Trans-Pecos, the Davis-Guadalupe Mounds, and even a little bit of the Big Bend. But as we go into Wednesday and Thursday, all intent and purposes, the eastern 85% of the state of Texas will be low to moderate fire danger. Certainly a sharp pendulum swift compared to swift shift. Pendulum shift, there we go, compared to earlier this month and over the last several months, the wildfire danger certainly has calmed itself down. So, let's switch to the severe weather side. We're going to look at the severe weather outlooks for the next few days, and then we'll take a look at the timing and possibilities in the magical land of Stormyville. Today, the Storm Prediction Center has issued a level 2 out of 5 risk for scattered severe thunderstorms. That's about a 1 in 5 chance of a severe thunderstorm within 25 miles of any given point like your house going into this afternoon and evening. A severe thunderstorm is defined as quarter size hail or larger, that's one inch in diameter or larger, wind gust of 58 miles per hour or higher, and of course, tornado. Tornado automatically makes you a severe thunderstorm. That risk includes the Panhandle, Northwest Texas, all of West Texas, West Central Texas, the Permian Basin, the Eastern Big Bend, Northern Edwards Plateau, Trans-Pecos region, Bit of the Concho Valley, the big country, and, well, northwest Texas. Dumas, Amarillo, Childress, Plainview, Lubbock, Abilene, Midland, Odessa, Pecos, Midland, Port Stockton, Sanderson, and Del Rio. Tommy, for this afternoon, we're going to be probably starting to see thunderstorms initiate west of Fort Stockton around about 3 p.m. Central Time. Take a little time for that. Fort Stockton storm to mature, and then, as usual, to move off the higher terrain and intensify in the proximity of Fort Stockton. Hence, Fort Stocktoning, that is about as reliable as my hairline receding when it comes to this time of year. So, with that, we'll see thunderstorms develop further north along the dry line going into the mid to late afternoon hours. Some of those storms capable of producing large hail up to the size of tennis balls, localized damaging wind gusts near or in excess of 70 miles per hour. Tornado threat today is very low thanks to a pretty meager amount of low-level moisture. Moisture, excuse me. But... The potential will exist for a brief tornado, especially with storms coming off the Trans-Pecos into the vicinity of Fort Stockton, where moisture levels will be comparatively highest. And, well, it's Fort Stockton, so never say never. Otherwise... We'll transition into the evening hours. A couple of those storms in western Texas will congeal into a cluster or squall line, probably a cluster, that'll move east off the higher terrain into the big country, the Concho Valley, before weakening late this evening. Going into th Wednesday, the potential for another round of isolated to scattered thunderstorms. Same timing as today. Almost same locations as today. The Fort Stockton area, the eastern Trans-Pecos, coming into the Permian Basin, West Texas. Some of those storms will probably once again be producing large hail up to the size of tennis balls, localized damaging winds of 60 to 70 miles per hour. Brief tornado can't be ruled out. Heavy rainfall. 
worth noting that flooding could become a localized issue depending on where exactly the storms develop and move since, well, they'll be dropping quite a bit of heavy rain, even if we're not talking about a particularly high coverage of thunderstorms. Then as we go into Thursday, similar story. Right now, the probabilities are lower. We're looking at a level 1 out of 5 risk for severe storms. That's about a 1 in 10 to 1 in 20 1 in 20 ish risk of a severe storm within 25 miles of your location from the Panhandle, West Texas, the Permian Basin, the Concha Valley, the Big Country, Northwest Texas. Wouldn't be shocked if this is refined a bit going forward. We'll see if we have any higher risk levels added. And, well, so it'd be similar to the last few days or the last upcoming couple of days. But, yeah, you get it. My timing sense is all messed up now. So let's just pretend I didn't make that blunder. And let's take a look at the high-resolution rapid refresh model going in today, tonight, and Wednesday. So going to this afternoon, thunderstorms initiate west of Fort Stockton, around 3 p.m. Central. Additional storms possible in the Panhandle, West Texas. Could see a cluster move east across the Concho Valley, almost into the hill country this evening if this particular model run is correct. It may not be. We'll have to see where storms do eventually organize. But again, could bring some additional rain to the Concho Valley, San Angelo region. And maybe the hill country. Storms will weaken as they move east late this evening, but may persist into early Wednesday morning. Again, this evening, storms, strong winds, maybe some hail, frequent lightning, heavy rain. Initial storms this afternoon, large hail, maybe a brief tornado, gusty winds. Everything calms down by this evening. We note isolated to scattered thunderstorms are possible this afternoon in southeast Texas, south Texas, east Texas, the Brazos Valley, in association with some sea breeze activity. Some of those storms that they materialize, frequent lightning, heavy rain, maybe some hail. Going into tomorrow, well, similar story. South Central Texas, the Hill Country, Southeast Texas, the Coastal Bend, the Brazos Valley, the Golden Triangle. We could see some thunderstorm activity during the afternoon hours during peak heating. Another round of thunderstorms possible from the Permian Basin, West Texas, maybe even the Panhandle, and that activity could move east Tomorrow evening into parts of northwest Texas, the big country, well, the Concho Valley, and maybe even a bit of the hill country as well. We'll have to see where exactly the best chance for any late evening clusters of storms and their eventual tracks will materialize. But it's that time of year where things fire up in the afternoon out west, tend to move east during the evening, overnight hours, east-southeast, weaken early the next morning, and then we do it all over again out west by that afternoon. Here is a longer range model, the European weather model. We're going to be using this for today's forecast. It seems to have a better handle on the overall expectations of the long range as we continue into late week and the weekend. I'll let this go ahead and get through the next couple of days. But good news is Sunday, Monday looking pretty decent across the state of Texas. So here's Thursday morning. Into Thursday afternoon, you could see some storms still possible. The big country, the Concho Valley. Going into Thursday afternoon, scattered thunderstorms possible. The eastern half of the state. Additional storms fired up. West Texas, northwest Texas, the big country. Thursday afternoon and evening, those could move south into Texoma, North Texas, the Concho Valley. Leading to thunderstorm chances continuing into Friday morning. So we go into Friday afternoon. Eh, some of those storms may continue moving southeast towards south central Texas. Another round of pop-ups across the eastern half of the state possible, the hit or miss scenario. Notice this model's not overly ambitious with thunderstorms Friday afternoon in western Texas, but does bring storms in Saturday morning into the Panhandle West Texas, with the storm track generally favoring Oklahoma and the Panhandle, areas farther north compared to the next few days. Depending on the overall situation, we could see slow-moving clusters of storms going into Friday and Saturday across parts of the Panhandle, Oklahoma, Northwest Texas, and West Texas. We're just going to have to wait and see how the overall scenario evolves. We need to get through the next few days before we can see exactly how things will shape up going into Friday and Saturday. But the potential would exist for some of those storms to produce large hail, damaging winds, and heavy rainfall. Speaking of which, here's the forecast rain totals over the next five days across the state of Texas. You can see the winners here. The eastern panhandle, west Texas, northwest Texas, into the big country, one to two inches of rain with locally higher amounts expected. Through Saturday, the potential for a scattering of one quarter to two inch, amount, two inch rainfall amounts. 
for all intent and purposes, uh, along the north of Interstate 10 from the Trans-Pecos all the way through the Golden Triangle in far southeast Texas. Some of y'all aren't going to see a thing. Some of y'all could get a couple inches of rain in an hour, especially with a more moisture-rich tropical air mass setting up. So it is also that time of year where we could start seeing those pop-ups. So some of y'all are going to get nothing. Some of y'all five miles down the road could get two to three inches of rain. It's the hit or miss scenario. Going into the temperature department, here's today's high temperature forecast. We're looking at highs mostly in the 80s across the state of Texas. We're going to see temps in the low to mid-90s down in the Edwards Plateau and the Rio Grande Plains. Going into Wednesday, temperatures a bit cooler, a few degrees with highs back into the mid to upper 70s to the mid-80s across Texas, 90s in the southern Big Bend, and down in south Texas, the Edwards Plateau, Rio Grande Plains. Similar story on Thursday, except a little warm around the Trans-Pecos, where we're going to have 90s. Friday, high temperatures, cooler in the Panhandle, mostly in the upper 60s and 70s. 80s along and south of Interstate 20, and Highway 380 for all intent and purposes. Down into the Rio Grande Plain, South Texas, mid to upper 90s, so someone may be flirting with 100. Same goes for the Big Bend. And then on Saturday, not all that different with 60s and 70s, Panhandle West Texas, Northwest Texas, 80s from the Permian Basin, Big Country, Concho Valley, North Texas, Northeast Texas, Upper 80s and 90s, Southeast Texas, South Central Texas, the Edwards Plateau, the Rio Grande Plains, Rio Grande Valley, down into the Big Bend, the Trans-Pecos, and the Borderland of Far West Texas. We're going to have storm chasers out and about in the Permian Basin, down to the Trans-Pecos this afternoon. Fort Stockton Daily Supercell train begins, and we're going to be there. So make sure you keep an eye on the sky with the free Texas Storm Chasers interactive weather radar on our website, texasstormchasers.com slash radar. You can also keep an eye out for content on the social media channels. Just search for Texas Storm Chasers. You'll find us there. If needed, we'll have live severe weather coverage, but I'm hoping... That won't be necessary today, but hopefully live storm chasing video, you'll be able to watch that on our website and on the Texas Storm Chasers YouTube channel. Just keep an eye out and we'll let you know. We'll be back bright and early on Wednesday with your next edition of the Texas Weather Roundup, and we'll likely have shorter update videos throughout the day here on the Texas Storm Chasers and Texas Weather Center YouTube channels. We'll chat with you all later. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us. As always, God bless. Thank mm-hmm. you.